we are headed downtown New York City to meet Weave, otherwise known as Andrew Arenheimer. Uh, he's been charged with one count of accessing a computer without authorization and another count of identity fraud. Uh, we want to find out why he did what he did and where he stands now and what he thinks the future looks like for him. Can you talk to me a little bit about what happened with AT&T? Uh, yeah, it was, it was June of 2010 and there's a public AT&T web server. And, and there's no dispute that this was a public web server. AT&T admitted it my trial. There was a URL on this web server with a number at the end. And if you add, would add one to this number, you would see the next iPad 3G user email address. I, I figured it was a, egregiously negligent for AT&T to be publishing a complete target list of their customers. Uh, I gave them a chance to patch, uh, like to, to shut off this API. Uh, once they shut off this API, then I took a sample list data the, that I aggregated from this API and, and I give it to a journalist because I feel if a big company puts you at risk, you deserve to know about it and, uh, and they deserve to be embarrassed and that, I really enjoy that part. How long did you give AT&T between the time that they patched the, uh, the problem and the time that you gave the information to the journalist? Uh, hours. Uh, like my concern is that somebody else can't scrape it, not that AT&T uh, has time to, to prep their PR. That's, that's not my concern. You didn't think at all that AT&T would notify their customers that, hey, we had the security problem? Oh, I, I think, A, that, uh, that every hour that goes by gives them a chance to give me an injunction to make sure nobody is ever notified. And companies generally explicitly will only disclose <laughs> if, if they're required to at, at, at the, the gunpoint of a law. They, they, never, they never do the right thing voluntarily. They have, they have, no, they have no financial inter interest to inform anyone. If you waited until the security vulnerability was patched to go public, then why did AT&T and the federal prosecutors go after you? Because I embarrass them. That they do not want their customers notified that their personal information was published on the open internet, and I went and notified their customers for them, and they don't appreciate that at all. You know, they, they want, they want to, to keep people from knowing when they've been put at risk. They, they want keep people to keep buying things and purchasing services, and, and they don't want consumers to be able to make educated, informed decisions. And it's it just, it's, it's an utter sham. Public API accesses are a, an essential feature of the internet. Like, this is something that happens on one website twice the population of Earth per day. <laughs> and, and they have no problem with this un, until you take this the, the output of a public API uh, and, and using it in a way that embarrasses somebody. And, and then, unfortunately, you're, you're somehow guilty of a crime. Well, isn't there something, somewhat of a difference between an API where a company says, hey, everybody come and use this, this is an open API for people to use, and one that isn't advertised as something that people can come and take advantage of? No, when you put something on the open internet, when, when you publish something, which AT&T did by their own admission, that was their words, not mine, uh, you, you don't have the right to say, well, you, you can't use this to, to, you can't cite this thing we published to, to embarrass us. We, we, we are too important to, to be criticized off of the things we publish. No, when you, when you publish something on the internet, you don't have the right to cry later about how people use it to, to criticize you. No, I'll, I'll probably go to prison then. Are you nervous? Nah. Why not? Um, there's, there's a line from the Gospel of Luke, and it says, uh, Luke 6.22, it says, Blessed are ye when they shall hate you, and separate you from their company, and reproach you, and cast out your name as evil. And uh, I did the right thing. I did something of global social good. I, I'm going to continue to criticize rich and powerful people and, and humiliate them, even from a jail cell if necessary. And, uh, and A, they aren't going to lock me in a cage and, and have me shut the hell up, and, and, and B, uh, I, uh, you, you can't get uh, somebody that, like me, like I, I don't have any, any fear of these, these bullies. And I knew when I, I got into this, this struggle that, you know, they might decide to kill me. And that's, that's what our government does. They, they have ceased any civil debate. They have, they have refused to acknowledge their shortcomings. And all they have left now is to shove a gun in somebody's face and shove people in prison cells. And that's, that's the last realm of, of tyrannous thugs.